what is happening guys Chris Minty G here and today I am reviewing uh, Team Krakens I think he was 14th at the very best but three of the his team made it into top 32 with this deck list this is Malamar Shrine Spread and I'm going to talk about the format it was played in and the card choices that he made for this deck and basically why you should consider it going forward into your uh, next event. So for the Brazil Regional as a whole, if you are not aware, 16 out of the 32 uh, places in Top Cut were Shrine-oriented strategies, which is just mind-blowing if you consider the highest tier event we've had in this format was Australia, and Shrine decks were really nowhere to be found. So that's this big dramatic change and meander down the river of a, a format is just ridiculous. Um, but even more so than that, 17 out of 8 of the top 8 were also shrine oriented strategies, which as I say is just insane. So I am reviewing one of them today, this is Malamore Spread. As I say, 14th place was the highest, um, so let's review it. Starting off with the Pokemon, we have the one Oranguru, um, just draw, that's basically what it's for, you play stuff like Ultra Ball, um, it's a good bench setter, but most importantly it is a really solid attacker, especially in the Malamar deck because of the Psychic Energy Acceleration, uh, all around just a really solid card to play, even if you don't get instruct off um, quite as much as maybe you would want to. This was obviously more important when M was in the format, just to give you more outs to end. Still a really important card, and especially when you can use it as an attacker. Then for the other Pokemon, and basically the Shining card of the deck, I apologize for nothing, is Shining Lugia, 130 HP body that can deal 120 with three colorless energy. That is just ridiculous when you consider how powerful Baby Buzzwall is because of his 130 HP body. And even with his perfect damage modifiers he has in his format, he can, he can still not reach 120. Uh, this is just a really solid, solid card. Um, fighting resistance, so that's relevant, especially in the Buzz uh, Shrine matchup. And if you cannot do the full 120, i.e. if your opponent's active Pokemon does not have an ability, it's okay. One more energy will get you a guaranteed 130, so long as you're willing to discard an energy, which you are because you're playing Malamar. Um, this deck has been talked about, um, I think, for the past couple of weeks, but mainly as a one-off tech in the deck, just to maybe sway the Zorg matchup more in your favour, as opposed to being a real... Um, combo piece in the deck uh, essentially for going for its win condition which is um, uh, spread but I'll get to that in a minute and I'm getting to it right now actually uh, Tapu Coco he's playing four Tapu Coco um, DCA we know what this does 20 onto each of your opponent's Pokemon get those dice ready um, he's playing four of them because he wants to start it I will leave a link to his report in the description so you can read it for yourself but basically he wants to start off with this to resolve as many flying flips as possible so not just the one coco he wants to do it malamar charge up another one do it again malamar charge up another one as many times as he wants cobbled with the shrine of punishment just to put as many damage counters on the board as possible and then seal the game via magical swap or necrozma gx's black ray gx so that's the main win condition of the deck. That's what it aims to do against near enough all the matchups. Um, but it does have a backup win condition with one prize attackers like Shining Lugia, like Orangaru, and like Deoxys. Deoxys for DCE 20 plus 20 for each energy your opponent's active Pokemon has. So against Ray, this it does a lot of damage for a one prize attacker. 120 body you would expect it to be, or you would, sorry, want it to be 130, uh, just like Mutate Evolutions, but you'd rather have it than not. Um, 3 energy, 2 of which have to be Psychic, 120 um, for that real um, power play, power knockout. Um, it's just a really solid one prize attacker for the deck and gives it a lot of options. As mentioned, we are playing the Malamore line, and um, the beauty of this and this strategy is your opponent um, really should not be targeting these down because most of the um, attackers preferably will always have energy on them, i.e. Um, Argent Wing and Psychic 
um, will have energy on them at all times. So targeting the Malamars doesn't really do too much because you're ignoring the threat. Uh, which is the high damage of the one prize attacker so you actually really need to deal with them um, or like I said the damage just stacks up and up and up and they um, take that one step closer to their win condition and um, so that's that's just the real beauty of the deck unlike other Malamar lists that sort of do crumble when the Malamars are targeted early and targeted in numbers for another one prize attacker uh, Mimikyu, we all know we're playing it for Filch, not Copycat. <laughs> Filch, Strati cards, uh, just a, not a bad way to start the game. And Copycat, you get to um, power one non GX attack back at your opponent so long as they used it last turn. Uh, so, Riot of Speedings, Claw Slashes, uh, even in the Mirror, Trash of Lunches, stuff like that, just really good to fart right back at the opponents. And it really makes them think about. Um, what they want to do if you have a Mimikyu chilling there on the bench um, it's just a real problem solver and it just does the deck uh, sorry just got, gives the deck so many more options that it would have without it and lastly for the Pokemon one Necrozma GX and one Tapu Lele and um, this is the wing condition the heart and soul of the deck Tapu Lele by itself without magical swap is a solid attacker because it does 20 times each energy your opponent's active Pokemon has not 20 plus but hey um, it's just a really solid um, attacker so even if push comes to shove and you're not ready to magical swap just yet you can send her in and she can uh, really uh, shove the prize straight in your favor which is always good to have and um, what Necrozma GX does is um, discard all psychic energy uh, 60 plus I think it is yeah 60 um, for each psychic discarded that's not what it's in there for it's black red GX flip over GX counter and do 100 to each of your opponents EX and GX Pokemon so that is taking quite a lot of prizes if it all goes to plan um, as well as them being all one prize attackers bar the Necrozma GX if you're unlucky to start with it so even just trading uh, prizes is really favorable and um, given how much damage the one prize attackers can do so moving on to the items um, I actually think this deck suffers quite heavily to garb uh, because of the amount of items and because a lot of the cards are psychic weak so it is something to consider um, when you're going for, for the deck if you see it uh, trubbish on the board try and be a lot more conservative uh, but sometimes I guess you just can't help it but yeah the items three acro bike um, hopefully reveal a psychic and a combo piece put the psychic in grave and continue on really solid non-supporter non-ability draw uh, counter catcher i don't really think this deck goes behind too much because of the favorable prize trade but it must do or else that's that's why he plays it so this is just really good allowing you to guzma and combo on uh, without burning your supporter so counter catcher really solid one-off and uh, escape rope you're probably thinking why is he playing this over switch because this is a spread deck doesn't really matter what's in the active they just want to put as much damage counters on the board as possible the only time it does matter of course is resistance uh, against dark decks i guess or um, anything that resists lightning i don't think there is anything um, but escape rope just really uh, messes with your opponent disrupts their plays makes them put out something that they don't really want to put out and as i say you just continue on as normal um, and the consistency card of the deck, Mysterious Treasure, searches out everything bar the Lugia, the Orangaroo, and the Coco, uh, which is just really good. Nest Ball literally searches out every card in the deck bar Malamar, and two Ultra Ball to search out literally every card in the deck. So, um, odd ratios, I guess, but um, bar Ultra Ball, they all serve a specific purpose. Ultra Ball can be pretty expensive uh, in this deck. Uh, given that it it's really um, streamlines uh, apart from discarding the psychic energy there's not really a lot of amount um, of discards or recovery or resi stretcher so ultra ball can be pretty costly so I can understand why he's not playing it uh, as a maximum line and lastly for or sorry the only stadium is shrine of punishment definitely mvp of the weekends uh, this card puts in so much work against those heavy ex gx decks um and there's the reason why uh this card was in 16 out of 32 uh deck lists of top cut and um, just a really solid card if you check the price of it uh, you might cry so moving on to supporters you're playing for cynthia because it's the best draw supporter in the format right now 
It's two Guzma, uh, you don't need three because as I say it doesn't really matter what's in the active. Apart from uh, Trash Alance you really want to target it down and kill it ASAP before it starts killing you. Uh, one Judge is disruption or um, well, yeah, disruption, uh, especially against Tempest GX or Algorithm is just a really solid card to have. Um, then three Lily, it's your ideal turn one supporter, but because you're not playing Tappy Lily GX, um, you don't really have that choice of what you want your turn one supporter to be. But still, apart from Cynthia, it is uh, the best draw supporter. And then her mother, Luzo Mean, to add back the shrines and obviously to give you a grand game in the mirror. To add back Cynthia's, Guzma's, Judges, all that good stuff. And lastly for supporters, one Tate and Liza, the switch effect and the shuffle, attack, or the shuffle effect, both really relevant in the deck. So that's why he's playing one copy of it. And for the energy, four double colorless energy and eight psychic energy. Double colorless energy is actually uh, really important here because of the Tapi Coco. As he say, he wants to start this as soon as possible to get as many flying flips off and um, before he starts uh, picking up prizes. So this just gives him the ability, or at least maximizes the ability to do exactly that. And eight psychic energy. That's pretty normal number for a Malamar deck anyway. So, uh, what do you think of this uh, deck, guys? I actually made a poll on Hey Font again, which I'll leave in the description, so you can see that people actually really are hyped about this deck. They uh, voted it as the best Shrine deck going forward, so people are really hyped about this. If, if you do not think this is your type of deck, at least be aware of it and have a strategy to beat it. Garboder, I think, really gives it a hard time. So some sort of Garboder-centric um, uh, strategy uh, would do you well. Stuff like Zorogarb, I think he said, was a really rough matchup. Uh, so yeah, please tell me what you think, guys. Uh, this is the deck that you're going to pick up and play. Are you happy to see decks like this uh, top in? Just let me know all that good stuff. Please comment, rate, subscribe. I'll check you out later.